any relationship where two people start to get closer and closer to each other, whether we're talking about marriage, whether we're talking about friendship, whether we're talking about a uh, house church community, in any of these contexts, um, n part of the natural rhythm of relationships is that there are ebbs and flows, there are highs and lows, there are uh, times when the relationship seems so easy and natural, and there's other times where there just is going to be conflict. Uh, as any two human beings start to get closer and closer, elements of their character, their personality just come out. And as the Bible says, iron starts sharpening iron. And as iron sharpens iron, that's not always comfortable. There's a, a refining process there. So it's natural for any relationship, including friendships, to experience times of conflict, of tension, of frustration. That's natural. But there can be patterns that set into our relationships. And particularly as we talk today about friendship, patterns that can enter our friendships that it's not just sort of the natural rhythm of times of give and take and, and, and occasional conflict. They actually become patterns of destructiveness. They're patterns we can keep an eye out for. Um, what I'm going to talk about at this moment is seven friendship busters. Patterns that if they're operating in your relationships, um, they are going to be the kind of things that can slowly but surely tear people apart. Now, some of these friendship busters we'll be looking at are certainly applicable to other relationships. Uh, marriages and churches and employer-employee relationships. Uh, similar sorts of things can happen. But all of them, at least the seven we'll be looking at today, all of them can be disastrous for friendships. Here we go. Seven friendship busters. The first on my list is unclear or asymmetrical expectations. Okay, the first, first area of challenge for friendship is the area of expectations. If two friends come together, or it could be more than two, say a, a circle of friends, come together in a friendship and there is either a lack of clarity around what each other is to expect from the other, or people seem to be clear, they think they're clear, but in fact their expectations aren't matched well. Someone's expecting uh, something up here, and someone's expecting something a little less intense, asymmetrical uh, expectations. These are the sorts of things that can slowly eat away at the core of the friendship. And this can happen in a number of ways. Um, it might be the case, for example, that the two people are in a friendship, and it just is the case that they're expecting very, very different things out of this friendship. For example, uh, for one person, they might see this friendship as uh, top of their list. To them, this person might be their best friend, or at least one of their best friends. Whereas this person in the friendship could be seeing the friendship as, as an important friendship, but, but maybe not a best friend thing. Uh, maybe this person just has more friends. Maybe this person has a set of friends uh, who have a real history that goes a long way back where say this person has moved recently and, and, and doesn't have that sort of context of friendship. Lots of different reasons can lead to mismatched expectations in friendships. Now the problem is that if this asymmetrical expectation isn't realized by the two people, it can quickly lead to an ongoing sense of hurt and frustration for both people, right? If two people are coming to the same friendship with different expectations, this person is constantly going to be feeling as if this person does not care for them or love them as much as they do for that person. Whereas this person will constantly be feeling as if they're being smothered, perhaps, by this person, or at least feel some sense of guilt that they're never good enough, never... Uh, never do enough for this person to be satisfied in the friendship. 
This happens all the time in, in relationships, particularly in friendships. Now, the problem is that often in our friendships, we don't talk about expectations. We have this idea in our culture that friendships are supposed to be natural and easy and just sort of flow. And uh, just, you know, things should work out by instinct and gut reactions. Not true. Not true at all. Friendships, like any other important relationship, need communication. And if the two people have not talked about their expectations in the friendship, well, my experience is, in, in talking with a lot of people about friendship, is that very rarely do you find two people whose expectations are perfectly matched, just sort of accidentally. Rather, there's almost always some sort of, of mismatch in the expectations to begin with, and unless they're talked about, this kind of thing, it can break a friendship. After a while, this person feels so hurt and rejected, and this person feels so smothered and guilty that while they never talk about it, they just sort of part ways. Turn around one day and realize they haven't seen that friend for, for quite some time. Clarifying expectations is absolutely essential. Now, it might be the case that two people either just naturally or perhaps through discussion adjust their expectations and, and have, or at least in the same ballpark, of what they're expecting and hoping for in this friendship. But the problems and the challenges don't end there. Here's another possible source of frustration with expectations in a friendship. Let's say, imagine two people, and both look at each other as their best friends. Okay, so they're, they're, they're clear about their expectations. We expect to be best friends together. But here's the thing. Let's say this person, this best friend, is an extrovert, while this one is an introvert. So here's the thing, even though they have similar expectations now, because of the personality characteristics of, the, of, of each of the parties, this one can assume that to be my best friend means X amount of time together per week. Whereas the introverted person would have a very different idea about the amount of time one would need to spend with one's best friend in order to be a best friend. So once again, even though they have clarified their expectations, we're, we're best friends, the personality differences can create a new type of asymmetrical expectation. Again, communication is the only way through this. If you have a, a, a strong extrovert and a strong introvert in a friendship, they've got to talk about a compromise for everything from time together to who initiates the time together to phone calls or texting or what have you. Lots of ways that communication can happen, but until the conversation is had and a compromise is found, once again, introvertedness and extrovertedness can tug on that relationship, possibly pulling it apart. Then there's a whole third area we could talk about where, where mismatched expectations come into play. And this, this one's perhaps even tougher than the first two. This one's cultural differences. One of the best examples I've seen of this is a book, wonderful book on friendship and love and intimacy called An Uncommon Correspondence. It's a book by two women, uh, one who was born in India, in the East, and it's about her friendship with a woman who grew up in the West. And so you've got these this East and West cultural difference to their friendship. And it's real interesting, in one of the chapters, um, the woman from India is writing her, her friend. Basically, it's just a, 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 let, a set of letters, correspondence back and forth between these two friends. And uh, in this particular letter, she raises the question of friendship. And this woman from India says, who's now living in the, in the West with, with her friend here, and um, they've met in the West, and she's processing with her friend the difference of how friendships work in, in her context from India versus Britain, where, where this other friend is. And she's saying, it's so strange. She said, in my culture, same-sex friendships, so two men or two women, she says, we just naturally express affection to each other. She said, um, in my culture, it's not uncommon to walk down the street and see two men holding hands together and it has nothing to do with romance. It has to do with the fact that they're strong, close friends. 
And she points out to her friend who lives in the West how profoundly hypersexualized our cultures become in the West. She says so much so that uh, heterosexual people get nervous, particularly men, uh, get nervous about expressing too much affection for their same-sex friends, lest it be interpreted as sexual. And so she points out in this particular letter that she feels that the West has been robbed of deep affection in friendships because of the sexualized nature of everything here in the West and really challenges uh, us as, as readers and her friend to rethink how we can demonstrate strong affection and intimacy within a friendship context that doesn't suggest romance or sexuality or erotic dimensions to it. Something we've largely lost in the West, she suggests. So once again, um, even how much uh, affection to express in a friendship can be a mismatch depending on your culture or, again, your personality type, these sorts of things.